Who is Marco Polo? Chapter 6. Fierce Mongol Warriors. Marco described many Mongol battles in his book. Some he witnessed, others he merely heard about. One of Kublai Khan's longest battles had ended two years before Marco arrived to write about it. It was an attack on a city along the Han River that began in 1268. The city was built like a fort with a wall around it. Kublai's commanders could not get inside the walls to attack. So they formed a circle around the city that was made of soldiers, ships, and a wall of dirt and mud. The people couldn't get past them to get supplies. Kublai's commanders tried to attack the city several times. Each time there was a bloody battle, but neither side would give in. This went on for five years. Finally, Kublai sent two engineers to help conquer the city. Outside the walls, they built tall catapults called mangonels. Mangonel is based on a word that means engine of war. It launched giant stones, darts, burning tar, and even poop over the city's walls. If an animal died from disease, they shot its body over the wall too. They hoped to spread so much disease among the people inside that they would have to give up, and at last they did. Kublai tried twice, but he was never able to conquer Japan. This shocked both Europeans and Asians, who had begun to think the fierce Mongol army couldn't be defeated. Mongols liked to stage surprise attacks whenever possible. They were quiet at first and used flags or lanterns to communicate. Sometimes they shot whistling arrows as signals to each other. When it was time for troops to attack, a commander told his musicians to beat big drums. A Mongol warrior fought with swords, spears, axes, and even lassos, but his main weapon was his bow and quiver of hollow reed arrows. Because the bow was short, a soldier could easily shoot it while riding a horse. It shot arrows twice as far as the bows used in Europe. The Mongol bow, Mongol bow hit its target more often too. However, it took greater strength to shoot an arrow from the Mongol type of bow. Mongol warriors were very good riders. On long trips, they each brought several ponies with short, powerful legs. When a pony got tired, its rider switched to a different one. Sometimes Mongols rode day and night. They ate and slept while riding. They were only able to conquer lands where grass grew. That's because their ponies needed grass for food. As Kublai Khan got older, he couldn't ride anymore. In 1287, one of his relatives tried to overthrow him. Kublai and his troops went to the Lao River to fight him. But Kublai was so tired that he could only watch from a wood tower carried by four elephants as his soldiers defeated his relative. If you were a Mongol at the time of Marco Polo, you were a nomad who herded sheep, goats, or cattle. You probably lived in a big tent called a yurt. You drank mare's milk and ate meat. You never lived in one place long enough to grow a garden, so you had to find wild berries, nuts, and vegetables to eat. You prayed to many household gods, but believed in one supreme being. Your most important possession was your horse, Horse stealing was punished by death. Chapter 7. Trapped. Marco was now in his late 30s. He had spent half of his life in China. He, his father, and his uncle had a treasure of jewels and gold. Kublai Khan was in his 70s by then. In those days, very few people lived that long. In his last years, the Khan became ill. The Polos worried he might die. Some Mongols were jealous of Marco because the Khan liked and trusted him so much. Once Kublai died, would Marco be imprisoned or killed? Several times over the years, the Polos had asked the Khan if they could leave China. He liked having them around, so he always said no. Marco was stuck. Traveling home to Italy would have been too dangerous without the Khan's protection. But in 1291, the Polos got lucky. A 17-year-old Mongol princess was being sent to Persia to get married. Women didn't travel alone in those days. The princess needed many guards and companions. Her guards thought a trip over land would be too hard for her. They wanted to travel by sea. Marco had just returned from a voyage to India. Since he knew the route, he would make a perfect guide. The Khan had a tough choice to make. He wanted to be sure the princess arrived safely. But he didn't want Marco and the others to leave. However, he eventually agreed to let them guide the princess. 
For the trip, Kublai gave the Polos 13 ships with 600 servants and crew members on board. He also gave them messages to deliver to the kings of France, England, and Spain. To protect the travelers, Kublai gave the Polos two golden tablets. They were each about one foot long and four inches wide. A message written on them ordered everyone they met along the way to be of help. If they weren't, Kubla might see to it that they were put to death. If you were Chinese at the time of Marco Polo, your house was probably built of bamboo and wood. You ate foods you grew, such as rice, wheat, or soybeans. Your religion may have been Buddhism or Taoism. Buddhism began in India about 500 BC and then spread to China. Buddhism taught that a well-balanced life would help a person find happiness. The Taoist religion began in China about 2,500 years ago. The word Tao means path. Tai Chi, Chilean, is an exercise of the mind and body that is largely based on Taoist reading teachings. There's a picture of Buddha. Let's see. You respected the teachings of the philosopher Confucius.